Hello everyone, this, we are back and this is another episode of Arcanum and we have finished up Tarant and we are going to go to Blackroot today. So let's go to Blackroot. One thing we can do is teleport. Such a nice spell. And you can actually teleport anywhere in the world if you wanted to. Um, you can teleport in random locations. And if you click on the black circle, um, it'll take you to the starting point of that city. Just keep that in mind. Let's click on black root here. There we go. That's going to take a minute. All right, we're in black root. All right, so Blackroot is a um, small town. If we look at the map here. We can kind of get an idea of how everything looks. There's a train, so we can take a train between Blackroot and Tarant. If you are mechanically inclined, it's probably the best play, best way to go. Uh, there are boats here. We can take uh, boats in between Tarant and Blackroot as well. Okay, so what we're going to do first is let's go to the um, bottom left part of town. So we go out of town and there are two houses. We're going to go to this one right here. So let's uh, plot our course. And this is going to uh, progress the quest for the skulls. The Siamese twin skulls. Which is one of the reasons why we came here. This uh, is a house, uh, the Hedge Wizard. Uh, we may or may not see him. We'll see. So there's a note on the ground. You want to pick up the note. This is Tyron, uh, which is the guy we're supposed to find for uh, De Cesar. You can read a note. The crow was in danger, Tyron. So. We need to take that back to uh, Matt. All right, let's go up to um, back into town, and I want to do one of the quests. That's kind of one of my favorite quests in this game. So let's talk to the uh, lady here. She's got this little aura around her. That's because she actually has a uh, um, a hat on that prevents damage from throwing from uh, throwing or any projectile. Really, it's pretty neat. Um, you can make that if you are actually a crafter. Do you need Do you need something? I am pleased to meet you, good woman. Might I ask your name? I am Miss Cameron, stranger. You appear to be well-traveled. Tell me, have you seen my son? Your son? Who is your son? Liam. My son Liam Cameron. The inventor. I haven't seen him in nearly two months. Just so unlike him. I was wondering if you passed by his workshop on your travels. His workshop? I'm afraid I must have come a different route. He's a tinkerer, like his father before him always working on some new gadget. He built himself a workshop about three days travel into the woods so he wouldn't be disturbed. And he is missing? His normal routine was to check back here once a month to visit me and stock up on supplies. It's been nearly two and I haven't heard a thing. What with the strange happenings going on in the woods, I'm very worried. Strange happenings? Oh yes, strange beasts have been spotted all over the woods, all different types, and not just an odd sighting either, a couple of townsfolk have actually been killed. It's quite alarming. I was hoping you would have news of Liam. Would you like me to see if I could find him? 
Would you? I'd be so grateful. I realize it's a mother's place to worry, but this is so unlike Liam. I'd appreciate any attempt you could make to locate him. Here, show me on the map where his workshop is. Oh, here. It's right here. She points to a spot on your map. I will bring you news. So this is one of my favorite quests in this entire game, just because of uh, the story that follows it. So essentially, uh, her son is an inventor. And her f his father was an inventor. And now he's missing, and there are strange things that are occurring uh, throughout the land. So what I'm going to do is uh, go to his workshop and progress this quest before we do anything else in here. And so you can go to uh, Liam's workshop here. Um, you can walk there if you wanted to. And this is his workshop. And you, you can, uh, if you are in, an inventor, um, you can find a lot of cool stuff in here. But what we need is, uh, yeah, you can find some traps, uh, stuff for traps. And um, there is his uh, chest here. We can unlock that. In some situations, if you aren't a a lock pick. If you can't pick locks and you can't unlock with magic spells, you can bash things open. So we find uh, this uh, dispersed magic spell, um, some gold. These are not going to be useful to me because I can't use these anymore. These are uh, technological ways of healing. And there's this magical trap here, which you can sell. Man, there's a book somewhere in here. There it is. Alright, so this is a, a pretty neat part of the quest. Um, we can look at his book. December 12th, 1884. And we are... Uh, 1885. We are June 9th, 1885 right now. This is uh, December 12th, 1884, just a few months ago. My latest invention is nearing completion. I am having some difficult difficulty regulating the magnetic flow along the conductive path. Yet, I am hopeful that I will solve the dilemma shortly. Liam. January 8th, 1885. Or three. I think it's five. I have encountered a strange beast today. It appeared to be a large, glowing light. Yet, as I watched its blue glow hover through the trees, a deathly chill swept over me. I left the area immediately. Liam. January 13th, 1885. Again, I have seen a strange beast. It appeared in continents to be some devilish cross between an ordinary pig and some sort of bull-like creature. As before, I was able to avoid confronting the creature. Liam. January 18th. My progress on the latest project has faltered. The woods are haunted by all manner of strange beasts. I must discover what happened and try to set it right. Liam, January 29th, I have found it. After much searching of the forest, I have found the demon light from which the beasts are are, commence, are emanating. It appears to be some type of vortex or portal. The beasts come forth from the interior with what appears to be no set order. I have some scrolls to disperse magic on hand. I pray they are enough to destroy the portal. Liam. February 4th, 1885. Alas, the scroll was a failure. It seems my technological 
The meaner has become such that even the smallest of magic will no longer function in my presence. I sustain minor wounds during battle with a beastly lizard creature. I must design a mechanical means of closing the portal. Liam. February 7th, 1885. I must make haste. I believe the contraption I have put aside may be my only hope. I have dis designed a mechanism that, when employed, should cap the portal, sealing it from this side. I need only make a few more adjustments, and it will be ready. Liam. February 10th. It is ready. I have given it the simple nomenclature magic trap. I have made two. One as a reserve. I leave immediately to seal the portal. I shall try my best to avoid the creatures roaming rampant through the woods. If I fail, I beg those who read this journal to return to my mother, Miss Cameron, in Blackroot. May the gods preserve us, Liam Cameron. So, um, there was a essentially a portal that was created, and we'll see it in, in a second. But uh, we have to follow this path here. We can cut through the woods, actually, but I'm going to follow this path just to show you um, some of the creatures we encounter. And you will uh, run into a portal, and the portal will um, have lots of creatures around it that are pretty high level. And you have two options. You can use the uh, magic trap, or you can use the uh, scroll of dispersed magic. And since we are magic inclined, we use the scroll. If we were um, technologically inclined, we could use the magic trap. They both do the same thing uh, to the portal. It just gives you two options depending on uh, which inclination you have. We will need to fight some monsters, which shouldn't be a problem for us at this point in time. And there's a body here. That's uh, Liam Cameron's body. And on uh, Liam's body, we will see uh, another one of these magical contraptions. So if you are technologically inclined, these again will close the portal. And he has. A, I'll just take everything off of him. Uh, anything on him? No. Okay. So we want to do, so here is the portal. And these guys are very high level. You see we have uh, 50, sorry this is uh, level 30, these guys are level 20. So uh, this is a good place to level up if you need some levels. Uh, but at the rate that these, these guys um, spawn, you could potentially die pretty fast. So what you want to do now is just get your scroll or your trap and you want to, from a distance, um, click on the red orb. And there you go. You have killed them. You do get credit for killing these guys too, by the way. Um, that's why I leveled up. At least anything else over here so the, the whole quest uh, is kind of interesting. It's this portal to another dimension that kept spawning these monsters, which caused the uh, the area, the woods, to be um, covered with monsters. And Liam was trying to save the world, essentially, <laughs> from these monsters, and nobody knew that it, they existed. So it's a pretty neat quest line. I definitely like it. I think we can just go, or just go here and walk to his house. Yeah, it's a little bit faster than having to run through. 
So this is pretty much it for this quest line. We can go back to town now and talk to his mother and tell him, uh, or give her, give her the journal. And there's some stuff in here we can grab. I have the space for it. I saw this stuff. Okay. And we are level 16 now. And I'm going to bump up our... Um, I don't think I need anything here just yet. I'm, I'm going to bump up my constitution. It's a little bit higher. Okay. Let's go back to town. And when we teleport, um, it doesn't progress the time. So if we were traveling from place to place, our time would go, uh, you know, it would go through days to get there. But since we're teleporting, it doesn't do that, which is nice if we are trying to get from place to place within a time frame. A lot of the quests in this game don't have time frames. Um, let's see, Needle. Okay, we can talk to this guy here. I think he will sell stuff. And clear out our inventories, and then we can progress on in Blackroot. Alright, so this is uh, Liam's mother. We're going to give her the journal. Hello. I have news of Liam, Miss Cameron. What news? Where is he? I am sorry, he was killed by one of the beasts roaming the forest. No. My baby, my poor baby. I am all, all alone. I have no one left. No one. He died trying to stop the creatures. He was a hero. But they killed him and they still roam. His death was in vain. No, not in vain. It was his creation that enabled me to stop them. Truly? His death was not in vain? If not for your son, the city would have been overrun with beasts. I will miss him so. At least his death was not in vain. Here, I found this journal at the workshop. He wanted you to have it. Thank you. Thank you for taking such risks to bring this to me. Here, take this dagger, a small token of my gratitude. Thank you. I am sorry for your loss. Goodbye. So that is uh, a quest. And she gives us a magic dagger. It's got 10 mana in it. Uh, we'll probably sell that later. Alright, so let's go to the next place. Um, it's the uh, inn. I'm hoping I can get rid of... I can finish all the quests in this town before um, time runs out. This may be a little bit longer video. Let's go here. And we can, I think without a lot of persuasion, get a quest from the innkeeper. Okay, so there's a quest between the innkeeper and Garrett Almstead, which is this guy. Let's talk to him real quick. He's not very friendly towards us because we are an elf. Um, no, you're elven failings. So he's, uh, he's not very friendly towards us. Um, let's ask him something. If we can talk him into... Okay, how did a half-orc become the town blacksmith? I get that a lot. I was abandoned as a child. I spent several years living on the streets, scavenging and stealing what I needed to survive. I never stayed in one place long until I came to Blackroot. What was different in Blackroot? The old blacksmith, Gurney, didn't have any children, but he wanted to someone to keep the shop running after he was gone, so he took pity on me and made me his apprentice. He worked me long, hard hours, yet he was fair, man passed away a few years back. I still miss him. Uh, you can tell him, oh, you've had a hard life. I'm sorry for your loss as well. So we just went up to neutral. Uh, you know, most people don't give a damn about me. Always talking about me being a half-breed bastard and such. Some even do it to my face. It's rare you who actually care enough to say a kind word. Thank you. Here, take a take this. It's a little something I made. A gift for your kindness. Why, thank you. Can I ask you something else? 
I must depart. So you've now uh, improved your relationship with him to the point where he may be receptive to what you're going to say to him next. Let's go talk to the uh, innkeeper. Which, this guy right here. What can I do for you? Greetings, good sir. Might I ask you your position? I am Mr. Holloway, the innkeeper of this fine establishment. A pleasure, Mr. Holloway. What have you to offer a traveler? Oh, certainly, sir. We offer only the highest quality rooms with excellent amenities. Each room is decorated in the latest fashion, complete with trunks for storing your valuables. Additionally, we employ guards to ensure the safety of our guests, all for a mere 25 coin per night. Sounds very nice, but more that I can afford. So you uh, you get him to uh, say that's expensive. He looks, at you, looks you over as if calculating your capabilities. Well, business is rather slow at the moment. Would you be interested in completing a task in exchange for a room? I suppose that would depend upon the task. A while back, I took my strong box from to the local blacksmith, Garrett, for repair. He said he would fix it for 50 coins, to which I agreed. When I returned to get it, he demanded 137 coins. I refused to pay. I won't be swindled by that mongrel. However, it's an old family heirloom, and I want it back. So you require my assistance in retrieving it. Yes, I'd be grateful for your help. If you can get the strong box back for me, I would reward you by providing you a room at no charge. In fact, if you get it back for me, you can have a room for as long as you require. That's very agreeable. Consider it done. An excellent agreement, sir. I await your return. I'm departing. So we need to talk to Garrett here. And hopefully he responds positively to what we're going to ask him or tell him. Is this something you missed before? Greetings, Gary. Can you help me with something? Uh, what can I help you with, Mighty Scum? I've just been over at the end speaking to Mr. Holloway. That's Ben Thrift. I bet he told you all about how I'm trying to overcharge him for his precious strong box, didn't he? He's got the nicest place in town, and he wants to quibble over a few coins. He did mention the incident. Can you tell me what happened? He did bring this, this box in for repair, told me the latch was sticking, and asked me to fix it. I gave him an estimate of 50 coins. While I had it, I noticed the hinges were so bad, so I replaced them. And one corner piece had chipped, so I repaired it. The final price comes to 137 coins. He did not okay these things, did he? Listen, when I do something, I do it right. He knows the quality of my work. If he brought things to me when they began to show wear, it would cost it wouldn't cost so much to get them fixed. Until he pays me, it's staying locked in my shop. Has Mr. Holloway been a good customer over the years? I don't care what type of customer he's been. If he doesn't pay me, he's not getting the box back. Come on, be reasonable. Why not drop the price a little? Ah, I don't think so. You tell that cheapskate uh, that when he wants his box, he can pay me 137 coins plus interest. Tell him that. Here, I'll, I'll just pay it. This is ridiculous. Here is 140. That's more like it. A little extra from my trouble, huh? Go ahead. Take the strong box back to Mr. Holloway. It's the trunk over near my bedroom door. Here's the key. Tell him that the next time he better come settle his own debts. I don't need to talk to some lackey. Eh, goodbye. So, um, you pay 140 coins and you get a lot of experience out of the deal, which is worth it. I've obtained the strong box. Well done, here. Takes it from you. I'm sure it was difficult to negotiate with that lackluster. Tell me, how did you manage to retrieve it from such a bar barbarian? He was a tough one, but I think I negotiated a fair price. Very good, I'm so glad to have it returned to me. But our agreement. 
As agreed, I shall give you a room to use at your leisure. You'll find an excellent suite just down the hall. I do hope you enjoy your stay and thank you again. Pleasure doing business with you. So we now have a way to uh, stay in the room for free, uh, which, you know, I guess it could add up and pan out over time. Okay, now what we're going to do is actually go over to the uh, mayor's house, which is... All the way over here. So I will meet you there. All right, so it should be uh, morning and we should be able to talk to the mayor now. He's over here. In the interest of saving time, I'm gonna actually not go through the dialogue uh, because this will be a longer episode. But what I, before I talk to him, I want to uh, read this newspaper again. Because sometimes this will trigger... It won't trigger if you don't read it in front of him. You tell him that you're on here on behalf of King Prater. And you're here to collect taxes. And uh, he says that he's allied with the Unified Kingdom, which is Tarant. So I collect taxes only for Tarant. And King Praetor would agree, disagree. So he cares not for Praetor or myself or me. And you can go down this dialogue of the Tarantian guards. Are they keeping Blackroot safe? Of course. And he says they have their own procedures. And what does that mean? Uh, there's certain rules of propriety. And uh, what is what you go down now is that is there some difficulty they cannot deal with? And so it's he it, it, uh, lets it known lets it be known that there are thieves, and so you can go down this uh, path, and you could say that I shall rectify the thievery problems you have, or you can get more information by asking him why is not the time. And so uh, he says, Thief stole his badge of office, which is a ceremonial silver dagger. Uh, it would be all the proof I need to have them arrested. So you can say, I, I accept your request, my good man. And then, so now you have a quest to actually get the thieves, um, the dagger, essentially. So that's part of the quest line. Also, while we're over here, we're going to talk to a gnome, or I guess a halfling, who is right outside his door. This will start another quest line, um, right here. It's a halfling wizard. So this will start another quest line, uh, within this area. And so he wants you to play a game. Sure. So, one question I'll ask, and one answer there will be. The wise man will spot what the dullard won't see. Ask away. A painted face, hands with no bones. My oldest brother was made of stones. What am I? So, the, the quest essentially is just a series of questions, kind of like riddles. Uh, the first one this guy will ask you is, uh, it's a clock. Um, so that's the clock. Correct. And uh, you, he asks you, um, would you like to continue? And you can say, of course. Good sport. Um, so he tells you where to find the uh, next person, which is the Withered Grove. And we'll go to that part of the town now. So if we look at our map. So we need to go to this area right here. Which is where the thieves are, and this is where the quest also continues. So what I'm going to do actually is go... Uh, I'm just going to go out this way, and then kind of fast walk over there. Mm 
now we're in the middle of town and we can actually walk there even faster by just clicking here and going over here okay so here's the thieves camp right here um there's a few guys here this is the this is the main guy and you have four thieves you gotta deal with um there are two i mean you can talk to him and he will give you another quest to uh, help the thieves out. Um, or they, uh, you can just kill these guys. Um, so if you kill these guys, you will gain positive reaction. Or, um, you will gain uh, better alignment. If you help the thieves out, you will lose a lot of alignment. So those are your options. Um, you do get a pretty good amount of experience um, just by turning in the quest for King Praetor. So let's save this and we'll just uh, work on killing these guys. If you go into dialogue, um, he could eventually get mad with you, mad at you and will want, you will wind up uh, having to deal with all these guys at one time. All right, we're saved, so let's uh, go into combat and... Start killing these guys. You could pick them off one at a time. Um, the last guy may aggro uh, with him, so... Okay, so these two guys aggroed. You can see by the red circles. He's got pretty good aim. And of course you can loot these guys. Um, this stuff will sell. Got a gun. And yeah, okay, he's gonna aggro me. Alright, he's dead. So I trade some stuff out. And on him will be the dagger. So you have all this uh, stuff here. This is the sermon of dagger that you have to give back. Music box, okay. So that's pretty much it for the quest, uh, that quest. Now we can walk a little further. And I think it's to the north. Wait, no, it's to the west. Okay, so here's the next halfling. So that quest we started back uh, with the uh, riddles. This is the second one. Alright, um, so yes, if you're ready for the next question, and you say yes, yes I am, and let it be known that the stakes are always high, as are the rewards. Understood, and the question? A brave one you are. Well done. Uh, the question is, death to, to one while birthing another, trees begin to shiver around its grandmother. What am I? And this is... Uh, I believe it's a spring. Okay, so he says yes, it's correct. And uh, so you can continue on this path here. 
and we'll go to the next guy. There are three in all, I believe. Three total. And here's the final one. Alright. I've come this far. Let's finish this very well. Whatever he, the outcome, know that Stones and I will mine, will remember you. Okay. Richard, let's get on with the question. Causing wounds and cleansing history dies from its rin rinsing, life, or scars is its blessing. What am I? And this would be uh, fire. There you go. Thank you. And so out of this, you get a gym. And you can use this gym to summon a uh, creature. That is pretty much it. You also get a lot of experience from that. <coughs> so now let's go back into town. And then we can talk to the uh, mayor again. All right, so let's uh, talk to the king. I'm sorry, the, uh, the mayor. So you say that you retrieved your dagger. He says, excellent. Um, he'll have the thieves rested at once. And you go into the dialogue that says, uh, the thieves, your guards can't protect you. And so you give him the option to um, align yourself with Cumbria. And he accepts it. And uh, if you don't trade the dagger for that particular option, then you will be stuck and not be able to uh, negotiate the taxes. So here you go. There's the taxes, and we can now return those to the king. That essentially is that quest. And so we've um, wrapped up pretty much all the quests. Okay, and one last thing we're going to do before we actually go to... Uh, Durnholm to finish up that, those quests is there are two people uh, this person right here which is a lady uh, she is the throwing master and if you are um, specializing in throwing she will give you a quest to find a special type of weapon I think it's Azram Star uh, this guy is a bowman master bowman and he will give you a quest to help find uh, one of his students. So I'm not, I'm not going to go through the dialogue, but I'm just going to uh, show you um, the responses. Um, I'm merely a traveler seeking information. A traveler uh, from Shrouded Hills to Tarant. Okay. I, I am Mighty Scan. Um, you can tell him that I suspect I will be traveling for quite some time. May I ask why? He says one of his students is missing, um, and he left Kaldan to come here. Students, and he says he's a master bowman. Um, what would you have me do? If you happen to come across him in your wanderings, inform him that I have gone on to Kaldan. Uh, on business for the king. Okay, so he's gone to Caledon, which is a bigger area, a bigger town. Uh, yes, I can do that. All right, his name is Dudley Crossington. Croston. Uh, if I happen upon him, I'll deliver the message. There you go. So now you have a quest to uh, find a specific person. And he's actually going to, to uh, Caledon. Uh, I'll just go through a little bit of her dialogue, because it's pretty fast. Uh, so... Uh, just to recap, um, orcs and they don't really like elves. There's not a very good relationship between orcs and elves. Uh, such language from such a beautiful creature. Out of my, out of my way, weakling. I have no time for sniveling dogs. Please, warrior, I require your assistance. It appears you may have some sense about you after all. Uh, why have you interrupted me? Your most gracious, might I ask your name? 
So she's Clarissa Shelmo, Master of Throne Weaponry. Um, so you can just uh, flatter her a little more and boost up your reaction. So and then you get to this point here, all mastered. Um, you mastered all throne weapons, no challenges remain. And she talks about the uh, Azrim Star, which is a special throwing weapon that she wants. Um, and she says she's in a contract. Uh, so in all my travels, I have heard nothing of this weapon. What is it? It's an artifact that dates back to the Age of Legend. The piece is, is rumored to have not one, but five blades protruding from its base and inflicts incredible damage. Plus, I hear it possesses the power to return to its master after striking its targets. What an amazing weapon that would be. Perhaps you allow me a few more questions. Nothing really else uh, you can do. Uh, you can ask her to join your party. I am not uh, that charismatic, so I'm going to not do that. And I'm leaving. So that is all we can do in this town. We've tackled everything. And all within one episode that's gonna be it for this episode um next episode we will go to darn home turn in the quests and then go back to Tur tarant and continue on with the progress in tarant to uh finish up the rest of the storyline with gilbert bates that's it for now thank you for watching appreciate it don't forget to give me a like and i'll see you next episode bye